Hey there folks, Scottsdale Travel Chick Sidekick here to give you our travel guide on Hawaii's Volcanoes National Park on the Big Island. In this video, we'll show you everything you need to know about doing your own awesome day trip to the park and how to hit all the top sites in one day. Okay, let's go. First off, just a little bit about the park itself. Hawaii Volcanoes National Park was founded back in 1916 and has become one of the crown jewels of America's national park system as well as a UNESCO World Heritage Site. It contains two of the world's most active volcanoes, Kilauea and Moana Loa, and covers 523 square miles in area, almost the entire size of the island of Oahu. Within the park, there are more than 50 miles of roads and over 150 miles of hiking trails. There's a small visitor center near the park entrance and close to this is the Volcano House Hotel. The visitor center is very basic, but there's almost always a park ranger or two there who can answer any questions you have about the park or going about your day. Go between 9 p.m. and 5 a.m. Between 3 p.m. and 7 p.m. It is just swamp. The Volcano House Hotel is the only hotel within the park. It has a prime location overlooking the Kilauea Caldera and currently active Halamau Mau Crater. The hotel itself has been around since 1846 and over the years it has developed into a rustic lodge that has hosted various dignitaries such as Mark Twain and Franklin Delano Roosevelt. Now Let's talk about the park's location, getting there, entry costs, and hours. The park is located on the south side of the Big Island. It's about a 45 minute drive from the town of Hilo on the east side of the island, or about a two and a half to three hour drive from the Kona side of the island. So if you really want to maximize your time at the park, it's certainly worth your while to consider staying on the east side of the Big Island if you can. Technically, the park is open 24 hours a day, seven days a week, but the main hours when the entry gate and other areas are routinely manned are 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. The entry fee for normal vehicles is $30 a car. Pro tip though, the entry gate closes at 7 p.m., but you can stay as long as you want after dark to view the volcano and exit when you're done. Okay, finally, Let's get to our recommended itinerary for visiting the best highlights of the park in one day. First up, we're going to assume you have a full day to spend at the park. That means arriving near 9 a.m. and staying until after dark to hopefully catch some nighttime lava viewing. So just prepare, it's going to be a long day. Of course, if you're not up to the entire itinerary we'll cover here, you can always take parts of it make your own custom tour. Getting started, once you arrive at the park, your first stop just inside the entrance should be the visitor center. Grab a map from the ranger on duty and be sure to ask them about the current hiking conditions and lava situation. Next up is your first hike. Take the 1.2 mile Sulphur Banks Loop Trail directly beside the visitor center. All right, babe, we just hit up the visitor center. It's right behind me, and we're gonna go on this first short hike of the day. Tell me about it. Okay, so we are starting here, and this is called the Sulphur Banks Trail, and it's a loop. So as you walk along here, you can see all the sulfur vents coming up. Walk along here, and then you cross a road, and you have an incredible viewing point over here to uh, see uh, Kilauea. It. In nighttime, it's even more impressive. And um, and then you can take the loop, it comes back this way, and um, it's about a 1.2 mile loop. And that's what we're going to do. All right, let's go. On this short loop hike, you'll experience some of the volcanic activity in the park, along with a number of interpretive signs telling you what you're seeing and experiencing directly below your feet. You can start smelling the sulfur and stuff and you start coming out into this open area with sulfur pots. Okay, 
Here's some steam. Some of the pots where the steam comes out. Here's just a big pile of stuff with steam coming all out of it. Up there too. So we're walking along the trail. This is the sulfur pots to the Kilauea edge and you just randomly look and there's this whole gulf of pots here. Pew wee, that stinks. After the steam vents and sulfur pots area, you'll continue along the trail and across the main Crater Rim Road, at which point you'll come to a T in the trail. Take the left to head back towards the visitor center, but our pro tip here is to take a slight 200 yard detour to your right to explore the edge of Kilauea Crater and get your first look out over the huge caldera and the activity lurking below. As of early 2022, the caldera is currently active with a live lava lake at the bottom, but from this side you can only see the steam coming up. After this short detour, return to the Sulphur Banks Loop and proceed back to the visitor center. Next up, you're off to explore the sites along Crater Rim Drive. Get back in your car and turn to the right from the visitor center. Then it's a short drive to the end of the road where you can get out and explore a couple more viewing points for the crater. Unfortunately, the Jaeger Visitor Center here at the end of the road is now closed due to damage from the 2018 eruption. But you can still get out and experience another view out over the crater. A key point here, which we'll touch on later, is that you'll notice you can't actually see all the way down into the crater from this north side. We'll give you the scoop on the best location for that later on in the video. Next, come back down Crater Rim Drive and continue past the visitor center and around to the south side of the crater. About two miles down the road, you'll come to two of the most popular highlights in the park. Thurston Lava Tube and Kilauea Iki Trail. Thurston Lava Tube is a short 20 minute loop trail first through a lush rainforest area, and then through a 500-year-old underground lava tube first discovered in 1913. It's probably the most popular stop in the park, so I guess you have to do it. But be prepared for it to be busy. All right, it's a one-way path. We're gonna to go to the right, and it goes down into this beautiful, I don't know what you call it, gully? valley. At night, after 9 o'clock, you can still go into it and they turn all the lights off so it's pitch black. Here we go down. Zigzag way through all these huge fern trees. Spooky, looks like Jurassic Park, huh? All right, the underworld, are you ready, babe? I'm ready. All right. Okay, let's go. The lava tube here is pretty cool, but it's only about 100 yards long and uneventful. So our pro tip is if you really like lava tubes, check out Kamana Caves near Hilo. They're so much better. Also at this stop is Kilauea Iki Trail. It's just across the road from the Thurston Lava Tube Loop. It's one of the top trails in the park where you'll hike down directly onto a crater floor that last erupted in 1959. The entire Kilauea Iki Loop is about four miles, but our pro tip is just to do the hike down to the crater floor from here and then return back up. You'll get most of the experience of this trail in less than half of the four mile main hike. But be aware, you will be walking down and back up the side of a crater, so you will get your workout in. Surprisingly, 
It's a very tropical hike until you get to the very bottom. So this Kilauea Icky hike starts off with walking downhill the whole way to the caldera bottom through stuff like this, kind of rainforesty. I guess we're halfway down, maybe more. We got our first real glimpse of the caldera bottom. You can see the path that people have worn in there of the lava. Two people are walking. You make one more turn and you're kind of to the caldera and you start following these cairns or stacked rocks out all the way across what was a hot volcanic lava lake in 1950s. After these two hikes, get back in your car and make the short drive back to Volcano House near the park entrance for a nice lunch overlooking the caldera. Explore the lodge and its surrounding overlook area, then get back in your car and head for the Chain of Craters Road. Chain of Craters Road is an expansive 19-mile one-way drive which descends almost 4,000 feet to the coast. It's a beautiful drive and along the road you'll pass many lava fields and historic eruption craters. So take your pick, but be sure to stop at a few along the way and explore. Before I talk about the best sites to see along this road, just a quick shout out here that if you're enjoying this video, please give us a thumbs up and consider subscribing to our channel to receive more fun, informative travel videos just like this one. Okay, back to the chain of Craters Road. Over the first part of this road, you'll pass a number of lava fields and eruption craters. There are many options for your time, but here are four sites in specific to consider. Pui Mao Crater is the first pit crater you'll come to on your left-hand side. Okay, this is the Pui Mao Crater. The lava still flows close to the surface here, so on some days, you can see steam rising from the cracks in the side of this dormant crater. Oahe Crater is an example of a triple pit crater and was the site of three eruptions as recent as 1970s. Okay, another one of the various craters along here is the Pahuhi Crater. And we're gonna walk up to the viewing platform not everybody visits it, but that looks pretty cool, doesn't it? Many of the volcanic results you see along this main road are a result of Moana Ulu, which erupted over a five-year period from 1969 to 1974. A slight detour from the main road will allow you to do a short hike towards its primary cone shield. There's a lot of history related to Moana Ulu, which is perhaps the most spectacular eruption in the last 200 years. Fun fact, over the five years of Moana Ulu's eruption, it pumped out enough lava to form a two-lane road all the way to the moon. Next up is the 1979 lava field. It's one of the many lava fields you'll see crossing the road and we found it to be the easiest one to walk around and explore. So we're in the middle of a older lava field, just walking around big chunks of cracked up lava. And this is just a big cracked open thing. Also, it's interesting to note all the little signs of life just starting to emerge after a bit more than 40 years. As you continue along the road, you'll begin to descend the huge slope of Kilauea's southern flank towards the ocean. 
There are great views all over the place here, so just slow down and take it all in. Here, about halfway down, there's a lookout point looking out over the coast and all this lava flow all along the coast here. Near the bottom of the road, you'll come to two more worthwhile destinations. Pu'uloa Petroglyphs and Ho'oli Sea Arch and End of Road Hike. Oli'i Sea Arch and End of Road Hike are at the very end of Chainer Crater Road. A very short walk and to your right, you'll have a chance to view a unique sea arch created by flowing lava in the pounding sea. Check it out now because in the decades ahead, it will undoubtedly disappear into the ocean. Next, a one mile one way hike down this road will take you to where the road officially ends and the lava takes over. Fun fact, the road actually used to continue through this area to another park entrance, but a large portion of this road is now covered over by lava from the 1983 and subsequent eruptions. Nearby is a short 1.5 mile round trip petroglyph trail hike to an area with ancient Hawaiian rock carvings. It's the largest petroglyph field in the state of Hawaii. Fun fact, Hawaiians once used this area to place umbilical cords of their newborns as offerings to the gods in hopes of good luck and a long life for their offspring. How was that? Good. Yeah, would you have hiked even that amount to put your baby's umbilical cord in a little hole to hope the gods wished him a long, healthy life? I would. You would. All right, are you ready for our next hike? Oh my God. Halfway in the dark to watch the, the puddle of lava glow at night? Yes, I am. But my knees are a little cold. Oh. Yeah, pretty sore. I already did 21,000 steps so far. So let's see if we can break a record here. Okay. Yeah, you're ready. At this point, it's time to start making your way back up Kilauea. It's probably getting pretty close to sunset, depending on the time of year. So your final goal now is to make it back up this road by dusk so that you can do night viewing of Halamamau Crater, assuming it's active. It may be late in the day, but this experience is really one not to be missed. But before I get into the details of this, just a few pointers. There may or may not be lava activity when you visit, so be sure to check the visitor center in the morning when you arrive. If there is, the only real place to see it is by doing a one mile hike out Old Crater Rim Drive. Since the craters dropped in 2018, nowhere else in the park can you really see lava in action. If you can, bring some binoculars. That really makes it much more impressive. And finally, it really helps to bring a flashlight. Yes, your cell phone light will work, but it's not the best option, trust us. Assuming there's lava to see, you want to park at the Devastation Trail parking lot at the intersection of Crater Rim Road and Chain of Craters Drive. There's not a lot of parking here, so our tip is to either arrive early just before dusk or later in the evening after the first wave of visitors has returned from viewing. Once you park your car, it's a one mile walk down a paved road to the Overlook. The lower resolution pictures and video here really don't do this justice. It's so much better in person. And just ask yourself, how often does someone get to see a real live bubbling flowing lava lake? Don't miss it if it's active. We have another half mile to go to the viewing place. This is it, a lot of folks are out here. Hi babe, how are we going? Okay, so we are walking out here to the viewing area. Why are you wearing a mask out here? Because uh, it's mandatory. Okay. So. You can see that in our case, we got here just before dusk. 
and here's what things looked like. You could really see the lava and the smoke coming up. Then, as the night progressed and it got darker, you could really see much more of the lava activity. And again, these videos don't really do it justice, but your eyeball or certainly binoculars would really see the bubbling and some of the explosions in the bottom. It was really pretty cool. We finished up our nighttime viewing around 7.30, so this was a long 10-hour day, but so worth it. Well, there you have it folks, our day trip guide to visiting Hawaii Volcanoes National Park. It's an absolute must-do when in Hawaii. Honestly, consider spending more than one day here if you have the time. But if you have only one day to spend, we hope this video has given you a great overview of how to hit all the highlights in the park in one day and come back with tons of great pictures and memories. Until next time, see you later.